Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our game show called Module 4, Lesson 15. Our aim for this show is how do we multiply non-unit fractions by non-unit fractions. What is a union frac... <laughs> I said union. What is a unit fraction? Well, the definition is right here for you. Unit fractions are fractions where the top number or numerator is 1. We will be multiplying fractions with numerators other than 1 today. Hooray! Whoosh. Okay. Stop being silly. Here's our first problem. 2 thirds of 3 fourths equals 6 twelfths, which equals 1 half. Well, how in the world did I do that? Well, I multiplied, so I had 2 thirds and 3 fourths, and I multiplied them 2 times 3 over 3 times 4 equals 6 twelfths, which can be reduced to 1 half. Fabulous. Now we'll look at the second one. 7 ninths of 3 sevenths. Now here's something I want to explain to you. When we're doing multiplication, we have the commutative property that we're allowed to use, right? So 7 times 3 is the same thing as saying 3 times 7. And 9 times 7 is the same thing as seven, saying 7 times 9. So as long as you keep the numerators up top and the denominators below the line, you can move the numbers around. And it might make it more, more easier. No, that's terrible English. It might make it easier for you to cross out and reduce the numbers before you multiply. So, for instance, here I could cross out the 9 and the 3 because they're both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 9 divided by 3 is 3. I could cross out both 7s because they're divisible by 7 and it's 1 and 1. 1 times 1 is 1 and 3 times 1 is 3. So it equals 1 third. Now, if this confuses you because you're crossing them like that, which I've been saying you should do it that way, you could also do it where you move the numbers around. So it's easier for you to see. So I'm lining up the 7s so I could cross them out and I know they're 1 and 1. And the 3 is a 1 and the 9 is a 3. So it's kind of easier for me to see. And it's 1 third. If I leave the top, 3 times 7, but switch around, no, switch around the top and make it 3 times 7 and leave the bottom, 9 times 7, the same thing happens where they're lined up. So this is 1 and 3 and this is 1 and 1. No matter which way you do it, you're going to end up with 1 third. So let's look at this one. 5 eighths times 4 fifteenths becomes 5 times 4, which are both my numerators, times 8 times 15. I meant over 8 times 15. So I could reduce this, right? So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Equals 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. And ta-da! you have your happy answer. Okay, so here's a tape diagram. It's very beautiful, it's very sparkly, and it's very colorful. So let's read it. Nigel completes 3 sevenths of his homework immediately after school, what a good kid, and 1 fourth of the remaining homework before supper. He finishes the rest after school. What fraction of his work did he finish after dessert? Okay. So, we look at this first fraction, sevenths. Okay. And then one fourth of the remaining. So that means it's going to be one fourth of some seventh. Okay. So I drew a tape diagram and I broke it into sevenths. 
So my whole, because if I look at this, my whole is 7 sevenths, right? If, if he does 3 sevenths, then that's a piece of the fraction 7 sevenths, which is equal to 1. So here's my 1. I broke this into 7 pieces. After school, he does 3 sevenths, 1, 2, 3, right? He does 3 sevenths. Now you're wondering, why did I put this in for the 1 fourth? Like, how is that 1 fourth of 7? It's not, right? It's, it looks like it's 1 seventh. Well, that's actually true, so let's see why. The whole is 7 sevenths, and we know that. I just explained it. And we are told that he completes 3 sevenths of his homework after school. We are also told that he completes one-fourth of his homework before supper. So what does that really mean? It really means one-fourth of seven-sevenths. And if you do that multiplication, you get seven-twenty-eighths, which reduces to one-fourth, not one-seventh. Okay, so that is why the tape diagram is colored in one seventh, okay, because it represents the one fourth, okay. So that's why this is here, okay. So then, how many sevenths are left? One, two, three. So there's three sevenths left. So let's check: three sevenths plus one seventh plus three sevenths equals seven sevenths. So good for us, that's the answer and that's a good way to show it. Okay, so you're taking three sevenths of seven sevenths, one fourth of the remaining homework, which would be one fourth of four sevenths, and then the re what fraction did he have to finish later on? And that's right here, that's the three. Okay. Next. Now we just are doing some straight out multiplication of fractions. So I did it this way first without crossing anything out. So 3 times 4 is 12 and 4 times 5 is 20. So 3 fourths times 4 fifths is 20 twelfths which reduces to 3 fifths. Now I could do it the other way where I do 3 times 4 over 4 times 5, and I could reduce the 4's and make them 1's, and then it equals 3 fifths. Okay? Got that? Next one, same thing. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12. They could both be divided by 2, so my final answer is 1 half. If I do it the other way, 3 times 2 over 4 times 3. The 3's get crossed out and become 1's because the 3 divided by 3 is 1. The 2 gets crossed out and becomes a 1 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my answer here is 1 half. Same thing, different way of doing it. Okay? Then here's what you're going to do. On the problem set, you're going to do 1, B, and E, 2, A, and D, and all of the word problems, and here are your answers. So good luck, good night, and I'll see you in the morning.